Hey there gang, welcome back. I've got a Strat here for us to work on today. And I know that some of you acoustic guys are probably getting a little bit antsy because this is an awful lot of electric guitars in a row. Don't worry too much, I've got some good jobs planned uh, in the near future that should be pretty fun for you as well. Now this is a John Mayer Signature Edition Strat. This is American made. And it's got an issue that's got the owner kind of flummoxed. And when he told me about it, I said, yeah, I gotta see this for myself, figure out what's going on here. So let's get into it. All right, so if you're John Mayer and you want them to build you a custom Strat, what do you ask for? Well, basically you tell them to take things off. There's no cover plate on the back here and no screw holes for a cover plate. You get them to do a 50s style headstock and just a single string tree and that's moved up here next to the G string. And it's a 60s style neck with no walnut skunk stripe. Other than that, it's pretty much like a stock fender in most respects. I think these are big dippers sort of a 60s style pickup, five-way switch. Yeah, it's just a nice little strat. It's nice and light, alder body. Feels good in the hand. I like the neck profile. So why is it here? Well, the owner strikes me as a guy who's pretty up to speed with the basics of guitar setup and maintenance, and he's comfortable working on it himself. He told me he's done a couple of truss rod adjustments that did not do what he expected. Uh, initially everything's fine, like it'll flatten the board out just the way you want it, but it very quickly reverts to the previous condition of an up bow. And he was getting concerned that he might at some point run into the ends of the threads on the truss rod, jam that nut on there and perhaps even crack it off, which happens, and that's very bad. Um, so he took it off and found a couple of spacer washers in there. He's wondering whether it's possible that maybe the end of the neck here is kind of soft and maybe the the nut is sort of compressing in there, basically it's mushy, uh, and the neck will initially take a set and then relax around it and then, you know, this thing gets deeper and deeper. So we will have to find out whether that's the case. Let's open it up and see. Okay, let's check things like the action here. That seems kind of reasonable, sort of midway factory spec that's around sixteenth of an inch or uh, 1.6 millimeters ish. So not too far out there. And we'll do the relief. We'll put the capo on the first fret. Pull down the sixth string at the body. And it looks like we're a bit high. That seems to be the case. Yeah, we're around 16 thousandths, which is, I like around 10. And so that's a bit higher than I would want. I've had people suggest that you can undo the front two screws and just leave these ones in there and rock the neck up to get at the truss rod. I don't like to do that because to me it's putting too much stress on those screws and it's possible you could crack the end grain here or the lacquer. So I always take them all the way off. It doesn't take that much longer. November 19th, 2008. See, there's something here that looks like it could be either an end check in the rosewood or maybe a slip of a screwdriver from a previous adjustment. I don't know. Loosen that off. Well, it's certainly snug. And it was recessed in from the edge of the end of the fingerboard by about a 32nd of an inch. It's possible some compression has taken place. Two. Let's see if we can sight down this hole. Looks to me like there's another washer down there. Well, so far I'm up to five washers, two split rings, three solids, and at least one more inside there. And this one is proving really obstinate. I've been using things like a little micro chisel here to try to get between the edge of the washer and the side of the hole, try to rock it loose, but it's very tight. And I don't want to mar the threads in any way. Bad neck. Very naughty. Okay, 20 minutes later, that last washer 
I hope it's the last, um, just is refusing to budge. It's not coming out of there. I tried everything. I tried my little miniature chisel, tried my conjunctival tweezers. They use these for eye surgery. And it's just not coming out. I even tried a vacuum cleaner. Let's just measure up this stack of washers here, see what we get. We got about 205 thousandths. That's just over five millimeters worth of width of steel there. And those split rings, you wonder if there's enough give in those to provide some of the mushiness that we were experiencing. I don't know. So the next thing I'm going to do is check and see whether we've got threads all the way down there. This is a little piece of bamboo. It's like a stick, coffee stir. And I'm just going to rub that up against the dirty and slightly greasy end of the rod. Have fun with that sentence. And yeah, it looks like we do. That's good. We've got threads all the way to that last washer in there. So there's no way we're going to be able to compress all of those washers to the point where we're going to run out of thread, I don't think. So I think we're all right. Um, there's plenty in there to adjust with. To get rid of some of the grease, I'm using a little bit of paper towel. Work that around down there. Okay, I've talked to the customer, come up with a course of action here. So this is my truss rod. And this is the pocket. And there is a washer that's trapped down at the bottom there. It's not coming out, no matter what I do. What I propose is that I'm going to get some very thin super glue and use a whip tip applicator and inject some glue down there in the side area where the washer meets the side wall and hopefully capillary action will leak in and bond that to the surface of the wood in there. What I'm going to do after that is subsequent washers will do the same thing and I'm going to build up a, a, a stack of them in there glued to each other and to the side wall. And this is sort of, I'm thinking about the washers that I found in um, bullet truss rod systems that Fender used in the 70s. They had quite a wide, like a wide, it's almost like a slug, it's maybe a quarter of an inch or six millimeters wide, very large bearing surface for their truss rod nut. So if I do this a number of times, I'll come up with something that's going to have a lot more I guess we'll call it mechanical resistance to sliding. It's going to be bonded to the sidewall of the channel and it'll be very difficult to push down there if there is collapse of the wood fibers underneath it. Now the obvious drawback to this is it's never coming out. Like if you happen to snap this off and we want to remove it, no, you're never going to be able to do that. Won't be able to use the, um, the cutter that's designed to re-thread truss rods that are broken. But as I said previously, there's one that's already down there. It's extremely deep and it's never coming out anyway. So that's a problem we would face regardless. And uh, so if that happens, we'd have to take the fingerboard off to gain access to the rod, pull it out and put a new one in. So that's where we're at. I'm going to do this. I've got to do it pretty carefully. This paper towel has been lightly dampened with methyl hydrate. And I'm really going to try to degrease this thing as much as possible. After degreasing the washers, I'm lightly scuff sanding each side so there'll be a better glue bond. Of course, I don't want to get any glue on the threads of the truss rod itself, so I'm taking the nut, I'm packing it full of wax here, and I'm going to run that down inside and make sure that we've protected the threads as much as possible. Made this little tool out of a drill bit here. Just to make sure that it's sitting flat on the surface, I can kind of tamp it down in there. And you can see that I've got the neck angled. I really don't want to get any of this stuff on the rod, so reach all the way down there. Be pretty sparing about it to start off with. Let that sit for a minute, and then I'll turn it over and I'll do the other side. I'm sorry you can't see this. It's impossible to film to get you in there. Okay, last one. All right, so I put the truss rod nut back on, snugged it up, and the action was very positive, very firm. Um, it did predictable things. The neck was bowing and unbowing as I moved it along. It seemed to function just fine now. Um, so I set it up with a straight board, and I've left it for a couple of hours to see what it does without tension on it. And we're still good. This is a notched straight edge. So I'm measuring the 
actual surface of the fingerboard. So the neck itself at this point is very, very straight. However, if I take my flat straight edge and put it on the tops of the frets, I can grab a feeler gauge and what do you know? Looks like there's relief in there. It's tighter up towards the uh, top of the board and down towards the bottom. Just like you would expect in a neck that's under tension that had the truss rod uh, pulled into place. So that's a little bit strange, isn't it? I know sometimes we do actually plane relief into the top surface of the frets, especially on things like classical guitars, Martin guitars uh, that were made prior to the introduction of the adjustable rod when they just had like steel reinforcements. So you can do that to get better playing action. However, in a Strat, it's not typical. And so you got to investigate a little bit further. If I take that straight edge here, I can see that the relief that's in there with the straight board is not completely accurate. There's a point up here at the top end, frets 19 and 20, that are quite a bit higher than the others. So this is a false relief. It's not actually a curve in the frets. This is um, something that's kind of deceiving. It's We're hanging up the straight edge on that one high fret there, and it's making it look like there was relief when there isn't. And the other thing is, under tension, um, if you were to measure it and you saw that and you started to crank on the rod, what you're doing is putting the actual neck into a pretty serious back bow to get the top surface of the frets level. It's a whole lot of strain, which is why you know we saw that the truss rod was sort of under the surface of the... Um, the end of the neck there. So you'd have to crank down an awful lot to get things level and flat. So I think the thing to do obviously is to dress out these last two frets and give us what, uh, give us a more accurate depiction of what's going on there. Now I checked to make sure that those frets weren't just simply popped up from the board. They're down there good and tight. I used my jaws, my fret press to make sure that they were and uh, they're still high, so this is something to do with the actual frets themselves. Now oftentimes this end of the board will actually warp up into a bit of a ski jump because this is where it joins the body. Sometimes there are stresses because of the, um, the screw holes in the back here. Things can kink a little bit, but this doesn't seem to be the case in this uh, particular guitar. So I'm going to do something that's a little odd. Now I've inked off uh, the two high frets and the one that precedes it. Now I know that the ones uh, next to it are actually pretty good and flat actually. So just those two that I have to worry about. I'm going to tape off the ones above that just to give myself some insurance. I'm going to be filing away. I don't want to touch these ones if I don't have to. I'm leaving that one there as um, a reference basically. So I'm not going to go below its surface and I can tell if I do by touching it with the, uh, the file. So I'm just going to put that on there. Now there are lots of ways to do this. You can use a sanding block. I'm experienced with the file and I know what it kind of feels like. I know how much to take off before checking again. Um, we'll test it. Treble side is okay. Center there's still a pretty big rock. And we're a bit better on the base side. So just in this area here in the center. I dribbled some super glue along the edges of these uh, frets that were high here, just on the off chance that they were loose under there or something, just to make sure, hedge our bets. I'm just going to recrown these. Lemon oil. Don't use boiled linseed oil. Number one, it smells bad. Number two, people put it on way too thickly. And uh, it develops this kind of sticky feeling after a while. If you get too much on there, you have to wipe it all off. If you're going to use a polymerizing oil, I'd probably suggest using tongue oil, to be honest, or maybe even uh, walnut oil. Linseed oil gets really dark over time. And it's just so thick. Alright, this has been sitting at full tension for a day now. After I took down those high frets and measured the relief, we were about three thousandths of an inch. And that increased uh, when I put it on the guitar and strung it up, we were about fourteen. So I took it off again, cranked the rod just a little bit, brought us down to eleven thousandths of relief, which I consider fine. That's okay. So just checking to make sure that nothing has moved. 
and we are still at about 4 64ths or 1.6 millimeters, which is fine. That's the uh, figure that the customer likes. And this is the thing I'm really interested in. See whether the relief has changed. So a capo there. Yeah, we are still at 11 thousandths, so that seems stable to me. I'll keep this for another day just to make sure that nothing funny happens. And then I'll give it back to the customer and that'll be all she wrote. Thanks for watching guys.